Welcome to the Next Chapter Experience podcast with Jeanette Blissett. Thought leaders explore the mindset, wellness, and wealth needed to realize next level transformation. Let's get started. Welcome to the Next Chapter Experience. I'm your host, Jeanette Blissett, and today's guest is Fred Moskowitz. Fred is known to be the alternative investor. Fred is an author, an entrepreneur, and he's a speaker. He's on a personal mission to teach people the power of investing in alternative asset classes, such as real estate and mortgage notes. He wants to show them the way to diversify their capital into investments that are uncorrelated with Wall Street or the stock market. Fred, welcome to the Next Chapter Experience. Let's get it on. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm looking forward to our conversation. What a lot of folks don't know is that you and I both attended Drexel University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So this is one question I have for you. What is the greatest lesson you've learned during this chapter of your life? The greatest lesson I've learned during this chapter is to be a lifelong learner. Never stop learning. There's so many people that once they graduate high school, once they graduate college, they have this idea that, oh, I'm done learning. They never even open a book again. The, the statistics on that, it's like 40%. It's really high. And that's such a shame. I love reading. I think it's so important. There's so many great new ideas and concepts to learn. So I always encourage people, be a lifelong learner and pursue that. Whether it's through reading, we have audio books, we have podcasts. You can attend workshops and events attend in person. We have opportunities to learn online through online education, where you can learn from top experts in every field, people that in the past you would never have access to, but now we do. Take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Always seek your your to grow and learn and get out there and learn something new, whether it's a business skill or a new hobby or activity that you want to learn learn a foreign language, anything. It expands your mind and really gets you thinking in different and creative ways. And that's beneficial for anything that you do. I appreciate that, Fred. I did have a chance to take a look at your book, The Little Green Book of Note Investing. And one of the things that caught my attention was the dedication that you have in your book. You say this book is dedicated to my father who taught me the value of taking action. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that before we get started. Sure. That, that is a lesson that I learned all throughout my life. And my father taught it to me by, by example, and through so many interactions over, over the years, I lost my father a year ago but always remember all the learning lessons that I've had over my life. It's been wonderful. The one thing about taking action that I learned is no matter what kind of adversity you're facing or you feel like you're stuck or you feel like things are working against you, the best action to take is to do something, change something up, try something different. We've all heard the saying, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten, right? So sometimes it takes a different perspective. It takes getting creative and trying a new approach, a new way of looking things. And these are great strategies to get yourself unstuck when you're feeling stuck and you don't know where to go, but standing still and being in despair, that doesn't serve anyone, not at all. Mm -hmm. And so that's always a huge lesson. It's take action and lean on the people around you that, that can support you. Ask for help, ask for guidance from people that are successful, all different areas where we can take action. Sometimes it's as easy as making a phone call, scheduling an appointment, sending an email, right? Sending a text message, whatever way is it, it resonates with you. And doing that 
it helps to get unstuck and it helps you to make progress and get to that next level of whatever it is that you're working to achieve. I would agree with that. In fact, I had a conversation with a very dear friend of mine and she was sharing with me a situation where she was disappointed in how it was handled. She shared with me all the ins and outs and my response to her was what matters most is what you do next. Exactly. That's why that resonated with me because it's so true. A lot of the time we see so much going on around us in the world, in the economy, in the country. There's so many things that we can't control. People spend too much focus and effort and energy worrying about all these things you can't control. Well, guess what? There's two things that you can control and focus on that. It is how you feel and how you respond, how you act. Those are the two things you can control. So start there. Start with getting into the feeling of feeling good, focusing on good things, focusing on gratitude, being thankful for what you have. And then from there, you can go to a place of, okay, what's next? What am I going to do now? Absolutely. What's the next logical step? And then there you go. You move ahead. You have to move ahead. And there's, as you mentioned, there's a lot going on in the world. In fact, I was talking with Jim Fuller and he has a perspective of how to actually manage yourself through those kind of situations. He uses the acronym CIA, control, influence, or accept, and then take action. I love that. So what you're saying definitely resonates. Well, in your book, in chapter one, you talk about why notes deserve a place in your overall investment portfolio strategy. Yeah. Okay. And then you make a point of saying that there's tremendous opportunity for all of us. What it takes is dedication and effort to understanding the value of education and networking with the right person. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do this. Maybe I'll spend a moment talking about what is note investing. There may be some of you out in the audience that never heard of this, right? Note investing, what it is investing in mortgage notes. Mortgage notes, just like the bank, the bank invests in mortgage notes. And I'll tell you what, when it comes to real estate, a lot of people are familiar with the idea of real estate investing. It's a very powerful asset class. I feel that it's one of the greatest ways to build wealth in, in this country. And a lot of successful people have done that. Now, note investing is not investing in the actual real estate itself, right? Because people can invest in single family houses and commercial property in vacation property, apartment buildings, right? But all of those are often purchased with financing in place. And so for us as investors, we can also talk about investing in the paper, which is the notes and the mortgages associated with those properties. And I'll tell you something, it's really an interesting part of the real estate and business. Many real estate investors, they don't pay any attention to it. Many people, when they think about a note and a mortgage, they think about being the borrower and not as being the lender. But what note investing does is it allows you to step across the aisle, become the bank, and now you transition from being the one making the monthly payments to being the one receiving the monthly payments. Mm -hmm. And the greatest benefit of that is that note investing is a great way to increase the predictability of your cash flow and income. What I find from speaking with investors, so many investors are focused on the traditional ways of investing on the stock market products mutual funds and stocks and everything, which are great. Which have a place. Exactly. It has a place, but the general strategy with those is you invest your money in them. You wait for the value to go up through appreciation. And then at some future point, you sell that. And now you, hopefully you made a profit, but you don't make anything along the way. It's very little. But when you own 
alternative investments, in particular mortgage notes, you get paid along the way. There's a payment stream coming through every single month. And okay. it doesn't matter if the stock market went up or down or sideways. It doesn't matter because with every mortgage note, it's backed by a real piece of real estate. And okay. someone is living there. Someone is running their business there. And they're making those payments every month. It doesn't matter what happened in the market. The okay. value might have went down. It doesn't matter. It's a consistent payment stream. And so I love to call this strategy, get paid while you wait. Wow. And so, yeah. And so it's a great, I love the idea of having a portion of your investments where it's generating income for you. Because I learned this firsthand working as an engineer. I came up through the time of the dot-com boom and the bursting of the dot-com bubble with all of that turmoil in the world. What I learned was that for me, no matter how successful of an engineer I was or how valuable of an employee I was, if things were not going well at the company and it went under, I would lose my job through no fault of my own. It didn't matter. And so that's what really motivated me when I was much younger to start buying and building assets to generate income so that my paycheck for my job wasn't the sole source of income that I had. And that was the always the approach I took with investing. I have a question, though. I have a question because I think the average person may be thinking, okay, stepping over the other side of the aisle and becoming the bank. All right. I love the concept of it. How do I do it? How do I buy one note, two notes, three notes, a portfolio? Yeah. And this is work. And I would be curious about that as well. Yeah, that's a great question. There's several ways to get involved. So let's break that down. The first way is <clears throat> to start actively purchasing, buying notes. There is a very large secondary market where notes and mortgages are bought and sold every single day. This is not something just for banks and large financial institutions who are big players in that secondary market, but also individual investors can go out. You can buy a note. You can hold it in your portfolio, or you can own it in your retirement account, in your IRA. There's so many different strategies. So that's one way is go out, buy individual notes. To be accredited for that, to, to play in that space. Not necessarily. Okay. No, no, you don't need to be accredited. There are investor communities you can get involved in where you meet other note investors, you meet note sellers and transact business. Everything's done through word of mouth, through individual relationships. And so for someone that wants to get active in this space, you have to get involved in the community, attend events, attend conferences, and get around other investors. Now, a second way to get involved in note investing is to invest in a note fund. I was going to ask you that question because that was in the back of my mind for that. That's a second way. For mm -hmm. And for some people, and this happens a lot, some people say, hey, Fred, I love the idea of node investing, see the value, and I see how it's a powerful asset class, but I don't have time. It looks complicated and I would rather be a passive investor. And so you can invest in a note fund. There are many different great note funds out there that raise capital for investors. It's truly passive. The fund managers raise capital. They will go out to the secondary market and find notes to buy. They have the relationships in place, the access to notes, and they will buy them, evaluate them, manage them and then pay a rate of return back to the investors. So for the investor, it's truly a passive play, and it's a great option for someone that doesn't have the time to be hands-on in the business because note investing, it is a business. It is a business. It takes a lot of time and effort, especially when you're getting started. And to be realistic, I always tell people, you have to consider that this is not a hobby type of activity. Either you do it and you're all in, 
Or if that's not for you, look at a passive approach, invest in a note fund. And there are many different great options out there in the marketplace for that. I appreciate that response because in the back of my mind, the question of how, yeah. where do I find these and things of that nature? And <laughs> Even the networking piece, how do you know it's not a scheme? How do you know these people are about yeah. the business? That's very important. This goes for any type of investing, especially in the alternative space where things may be not regulated. It's on you to do your due diligence and check people out. Check people out very well. What's their reputation in the industry? What's their reputation in the eyes of the law and the court system, right? Run a background check on people. You're going to be turning over your capital and entrusting them. So you better do your homework and make sure that the person's reputable. Make sure that the people are in alignment with your goals and objectives, because it's a long-term relationship you're getting involved in. And the way I always look at it, Whenever I speak with investors and I speak with people, I tell them, look, if things go well, then in the future, you can do more transactions together, more deals together. It's like you're building a long-term financial relationship. It's not a transactional business. I always tell people, look at it through that lens because networks and relationships are everything in this space. Absolutely. More so than anything else. That's something that I talk about in the book a lot about that due diligence piece. That's so important. But back to your earlier point about where to find notes, you can go to real estate events, real estate conferences and conventions. There's conferences and conventions for note investing specifically, but in real estate circles, there'll always be a couple of folks that are doing notes too. And that's a great way to build those relationships and have an opportunity to, to buy notes for yourself or your portfolio. Is there a drawback to actually buying note funds versus the individual approach to the networking at real estate symposiums? I know for the passive investor, it's probably <laughs> the way to go, but is there a drawback to it from a certain standpoint, from your perspective? No, not a drawback. It really comes down to time. Mm -hmm. How much time do you have available? And is it something that's in alignment? Is it a business you want to be active in or not? Mm -hmm. Or would you be more happy in your life doing some other type of work? I, I talk to people all the time, successful professionals, successful engineers, successful business owners, attorneys accountants could be in any profession, healthcare, they love what they do. And so focus on that. If you love what you do, focus on that. Do investing as well to build wealth and financial stability, but probably a passive approach is going to be better for you in that case. And there's no right or wrong answer, Jeanette. It's a very personal decision, but the main thing is do what's in alignment for you and your goals and objectives. And if you decide, hey, I love this node investing space. I want to be active in it and build a business around it. Great. Awesome. Do that. Go all in, but make sure it's in alignment with what you want to do. The thought that comes to mind is I have attended two real estate symposiums here to me that many of the attendees we're there for the education piece, but also for the networking piece, because yeah. they were looking for ways to, I would say, upscale their investment portfolio. They were in it for the education, but also for the opportunity. Yeah, that's the thing. It's all about getting out there, getting exposed to different ideas, different concepts. They may all be great ideas, but not everyone is the right fit for you. And so it's a matter of finding what's appealing, what resonates, and what's in alignment with your goals and perspectives. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. And it's just, Jeanette, you and I both, we might love ice cream, right? Yeah. But not <laughs> every single flavor is for you, and the same ones might not be for me. Taste all of them. Taste the different ones. When yeah. you find the ones you like, then you can focus on that. <laughs> 
So your motivation for writing the little book of note investing, what was your motivation? Wow. Thank you. My goal with that book was really to present a high level overview of the asset class and the industry, the benefits, the risks, so that someone that was just learning about it could really get a good overview of the business and find some key takeaways that they could put into action right away. We cover so much. I cover why do notes get sold? Why do banks sell notes? And how does that work? As well as how to find notes to buy, how to analyze them, how to perform due diligence, how do note funds work and how to evaluate those as well. And I have a couple of chapters dedicated to using your retirement accounts to do note investing, which I feel is a super powerful strategy. And, uh, and so really wanted to just give a great introductory overview to people because I find that it's really a niche area and many people don't, don't know about it, or maybe they don't understand how it works. I appreciate that. In fact, the timing is probably very right for a lot of people who are listening to this podcast. Uh, if you're still working, mm -hmm. still investing in a 401k, you've got your IRAs and things of that nature, and you're wondering, okay, is this really performing at the level that I expected and the level that I need? Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. As someone who spent decades working in the engineering world, I was involved in 401k plan for my employer, which was great. But what I saw was that 401k plans, retirement plans, they will give you half dozen or so different election options, investment options. So people will blindly say, I want to be diversified. So I'm going to split my money among these six choices. That's great. But guess what? It's 100% in the stock market. And that's not really diversification. Good point. And people would have a false sense of security. What would happen is when the market takes a tumble, we go through a downturn, people can watch their retirement account lose 30, 40, maybe 50% in value in very short time. And it's very unsettling. What if you didn't have all of your capital in the stock market? What if you had a portion of it in other things like in real estate, in mortgage notes, where there's not that volatility, it's more stable. And no matter what happens in the market, income is coming in every single month, every single month. So that allows for the compounding and all of these powerful strategies that we learn about where when you have a long time horizon as you're saving for retirement, the compounding of interest is what really makes the growth happen. It's not the contributions you put in each year, although that is important, but the compound growth, that's where the power is. Okay. Okay. So let's stay there for a second. As it relates to note investing, what can an investor expect in terms of returns? You talked about the compounding piece. Are there minimum investments when you're working with a fund of notes versus working directly with a note? How does that piece work? That's, that's a great question. So as far as returns, it all comes down to how much risk tolerance do you have? Hmm. How comfortable are you with risk? Anything else? If you want a lower risk note, you're going to get a lower rate of return. If you're comfortable with a higher risk, you can have a higher rate of return. Notes will pay anywhere from 4 and 5% up to double digits. We can see 10, 12% even. And a lot of it depends on the quality of the note, the quality of the property, the track record, and payment history and all of these things. What I always recommend to investors is when you're new, you're starting out, go with the lower risk, lower return notes. Start there. And then as time goes on, you'll get more comfortable and you can see what you have an appetite for. You can buy notes that are at a higher risk and include those in your portfolio over time. Now with note funds, it's the same thing. 
same thing. There are no funds that pay five and 6% rate of return. There are other note funds that take on a lot more risk and they can get up into the double digits, eight, 10, 12%, maybe even higher. And it all depends on is the fund investing in residential mortgage notes or commercial properties, or is it loans to real estate investors that are doing fix and flip properties? They pay very high interest on those, but they're short-term loans. They're only for one year or 18 months, but they pay 12 and higher percent on those. They're not living in the property. They buy a property, they renovate it, and then they want to get it on the market as quickly as possible and pay that loan off because of the high interest rate. So you have all these different different scenarios. And note funds, as far as minimums, it's a wide range. I've seen note funds with low minimums, maybe 25000 and it goes all the way up to 100000 150, 200000 And it just depends on finding the right fit for you. You mentioned time horizon. However, I was thinking about the time horizon within, let's just say, a note fund. It okay. feels like if it's a fund, it's probably a cycle of having some short-term, long-term, and as they come due, they continue to pay. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's correct. An interesting thing that happens with mortgage notes, I'll give you a statistic, Jeanette. In the United States, the average lifespan of a residential mortgage note Yes, but five to seven. Five to seven years, exactly. Mm -hmm. Even though it might be a 15 or a 30 year term on them. That's right, because they're refinancing. The reality is, yeah, life happens. People refinance. People will have to move because job change or they're downsizing or they need a bigger house or they want to be in a better school district. All of these things happen. And so you never know a note can get paid off at any time. So that is always happening. And for us as note investors, one of our most important jobs is the capital comes back in and we want to turn around and redeploy that and buy new notes as quickly as possible. So we're not sitting on idle money there. That's the reality of it. You never know when a payoff will come. It's an element of randomness in this business. So part of our job is be ready for it and be ready to buy new notes. That's why there's always notes being bought, always notes being sold and opportunities are out there in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to be in the business of buying notes, it's like you mentioned earlier, it's a show enough business. You have to stay active and on top of it for that reason. However, if you want the passive income, it would be the note funds. On your website, you introduce yourself and you talk about your book. And what other things do you do within this business? In the business, I love public speaking. I do quite a bit of it. I love podcasting as well. It's a form of speaking, but I go to many events where I present. I love education and I'm on a mission to provide financial education and sharing some of the different concepts and strategies that I've found to be successful. And I do quite a lot of that to give back to the community and offer a way for education. My books, a lot of work went into that. I love writing. I really enjoy it. And it's something I do on an ongoing basis, writing different articles and contributions as well. But my main focus is in the, the note investing space. I'm active as an investor as well. I would not be doing the, my best if all I invest in are notes, right? I want a diversified portfolio. So I also invest in real estate deals. I love real estate. I think it's a powerful asset class. I can't be hands-on in managing and, and doing all that. And that's fine. There's other people out there that that's their skill and specific expertise. And that's great. And so I love investing in different deals, but I really enjoy alternative investments because you get to meet the people involved, right? I always say this, if you're someone that you invest in your 
401k, maybe you have some IRAs. I always a ask a couple of questions like, do you know where all of your accounts are? <laughs> Can you tell me where all your different retirement accounts are? And some people know, they can tell me, some people, they don't know, and they would have to go look it up. The next question is, out of all those accounts, do you know what your money is invested in? Do you actually know what things that they're invested in? Do you have too much exposure in one sector or another? People in general don't know. And the third question, this is the big one. Do you know anyone that works there? on a first name basis that you could call if you had questions or if you needed something. And most people would say, no. Yeah. Yeah. You're just a number. You're just an account number calling into a call center. So when you're dealing with alternative investments, it's not like that at all. It's the complete other end of the spectrum. It becomes very personalized. You're building relationships with the people you're dealing with. And that's something that really resonates with me. I love that. I think that's so important. A lot of times it comes down to, hey, you're in this investing game. And instead of betting your money on the horse, pay attention to the jockey because that's who you're building the relationship with. And it doesn't matter what the deal is. And yeah, it's important and all, but don't lose sight of who's running that. Who is in the leadership position and role and how do they operate and how do they do business? Because when things are going fine, everything's great. But what about when there's a problem that comes up? What about when things aren't going well? How does that leader lead? How do they handle adversity? And are you confident that they can weather the storm and lead everyone to a better place in the end because when adversity comes up so do opportunities but it takes the right kind of mindset to navigate through those storms something that i attribute to a lot of the success i have is spending time and focus on building and nurturing relationships and frankly Jeanette, I feel that it doesn't matter what business you're in. This is something that will benefit you in life. Having a good network, having a good contact list in your cell phone that mm -hmm. you can call people up and ask for guidance, bounce ideas, share ideas with each other, give value to each other. It boils down to community. It does. It boils down to the community that you're actually creating outside of the actual physical community that you live in, but the community that you create almost as an ecosystem that you live within based on some of the things that, as you mentioned before, align with what your personal vision is or outlook for your life. So that makes a lot of sense to me. It really does. I imagine the average person is thinking, I am so busy. I am so busy with family. I am so busy with work. I'm so busy with this and that. But at the end of the day, when we can't work or don't want to work anymore, our money has to work for us. That's right. This is Absolutely way, right. This is the way to get ahead of it if you're within a certain age range or actually step into it and make some changes. As you said, take some action that will change the trajectory or the direction, if needed, of where you're going. So I definitely appreciate the work that you're doing. And the education piece almost goes without saying, but again, it requires a dedication and an interest in expanding your mind and your knowledge base around things that may have been foreign to you. And sometimes that's a challenge. It's easier to turn on the TV and watch the local news or watch the <laughs> programs at night and watch the funny videos on your devices rather than spending some time in an area that's really going to pay off for you in the future. Yeah. And a lot of it comes down to who are the people you surround yourself with? right? Yeah. Who are the people you're surrounding yourself with and what kind of conversations go on within those groups? That's huge. We can spend time talking about things that you cannot control. You can go and turn on all of those media outlets and focus on that. Or instead, what if you go and find some great YouTube videos to learn about investing or listening to some great podcasts? or listen to a great audio book, expand your skills and knowledge. What are the ways 
that you spend your leisure time. That has a huge impact. And then when it comes to getting together with other people, who are the people you surround yourself? What rooms are you going into in life? Let's say this, Jeanette, let's say you have $100,000 a year business, $100,000 a year revenue, right? What if you're a business owner, you're crushing it, you're successful, but what happens if you got involved in a group where everyone else had a million dollar a year businesses? What kind of conversations would be going on? What kind of problems would be getting discussed and solved? What kind of books is everyone reading? What kind of content are people consuming? What great events are people going to that you'll get invited to to come along and experience, right? And it has a way of completely uplifting and up-leveling the whole group, the whole environment. And it's something really pay attention to that because it matters in a major way. I know you have a website and ways for people to contact you. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners that they need to know? Thank you. I have a free offer that I'd like to extend to your listeners. If you visit my website, which is fredmoskowitz.com, or if you prefer an easier spelling, you can go to giftfromfred.com. I have a special report about node investing, gets into more detail than what we talked about on this podcast. I'll be happy to send that out by email to anyone that requests it. Just go on the website and register there and we'll send that out. And for anyone that wants to contact me through text message, you can text the keyword money to this number, 215-461-4400. Three, three. And I'll tell you again, I always love networking, connecting with investors, and I look forward to connecting with you and having great conversations because it's what life's all about is building relationships. And I look forward to that. Thank you. Thanks so much for spending some time with me and the next chapter experience. I really appreciate it. Thank you.